five things that you need to stop doing today if you want to recover from your anxiety disorder. The first thing you need to stop doing is waiting, okay? This, this is broad, but waiting to go to the doctor to get checked out to get that initial reassurance that you're healthy and that anxiety is indeed causing the symptoms that you're dealing with. Stop waiting on exercise. It's going to help you, especially if you have health anxiety and heart anxiety, and that's going to be able to convince you that your heart is healthy enough or that your body is healthy enough and that this is anxiety that's causing it. Stop waiting to do what that book suggests, what this video or the video that I'm giving you today suggests. Stop waiting on executing on what your coach or your therapist wants you to do or what that course advised you to do, right? Stop waiting. I waited so long, probably before I had my first big breakthrough with anxiety where I, I started to really get better and to accept, it was about two years, guys, two years. I waited on everything. I waited on everything. I put off my exposure because of fear, obviously, and I know a lot of you guys struggle with that. I'm, I'm, I'm terrified to go back to work. I'm terrified to get into the vehicle. You know, I think we, we want to get everything healed up mostly with our routine maybe or our structure or through mindfulness and through our thought process and then hopefully whenever we get back out there to the workforce or the car it's all going to be just smooth sailing right no you have to go through a period of time where you're uncomfortable and that you're going to be slapped in the face with symptoms with your exposure the faster that you start that process obviously equates to a faster recovery so stop waiting the second thing guys this is a big one Stop relying on external reassurance to feel safe or to feel good. I understand on how that can go a long way, especially in the beginning, okay? I don't want to get this confused with like, make sure you don't ever go to the doctor you know, to find out. That, like in the beginning, guys, there's nothing wrong with feeling less alone. There's nothing wrong with seeking comfort in friends or family, finding those people that you can rely on. There's nothing wrong with going to the doctor to find out, obviously, that this is anxiety, not a heart problem or cancer or something like that. Don't get this confused with that. But as time goes on and you've been told over and over and over that you're healthy, you've been told over and over and over that things are okay or maybe you're going to get through this. And, you know, you've, you've checked, you've checked, you've checked. Because I'm not just talking about people. I'm talking about devices or behaviors, like having to rely on what you feel with your two fingers on your neck or what the Apple Watch says or what that blood pressure machine says. And even to an extent, guys, even videos and things like that, I think as time goes on, right, you have to start looking within yourself, right? Your subconscious is craving that, but you're never going to get your subconscious to trust you if it has to be based off of what your pulse says on your Apple Watch or what you feel over here, right? Or if it's based off of what your mom said on the phone to give you comfort and to give you, you know, maybe some safety contacts, right? And even if you have health anxiety, you know deep inside that eventually you're going to have to stop getting checked out every other day. Okay. And you have to make that decision for you. I can't make that decision, but you know, obviously if you're going to finally get out of like something like health anxiety, right? Or heart anxiety, you have to make that tough choice one day that I'm just, I'm not going back at least for a good while. I'm going to work on my acceptance. We have to start thinking about internal reassurance and how valuable that's going to be to our subconscious. You're never going to develop that trust. If you're having to rely on all these other people, just friends, just family, going to the doctor every single day, what your Apple Watch says, you'll never develop that connection. So whenever you wake up and you're like, I accept anxiety or things are going to be good and things are great. And then later on in the afternoon, you're having to check your vitals. You're having to Google your symptoms or you're having to run back to the hospital or you're having to call up your mom again and everything like that. There's nothing wrong with that in the very beginning, okay? Because we don't know how this thing works. We feel lost. We need answers. We need guidance. We need support. We need love. And, you know, we need support and love throughout this process. But eventually, guys, you have to start looking within. Your subconscious wants that love and support and guidance from you. That's going to be the ultimate thing. Right now, it's just so used to getting it from everywhere else that whenever you try to guide it out, it doesn't trust you. Be consistent with that. Number three, this is a big one, guys. Stop putting a timetable on your recovery. It puts too much pressure on you, not just consciously, but subconsciously. Stop trying to force your recovery. It needs to be natural. It's going to take time. Tear down the parameters, the boundaries, the timetable, right? And start taking this day by day and understand that this is going to take months. Stop thinking days or weeks. So many of you are thinking, like, I gotta get, I gotta be better in two months before this trip, or I gotta be fully healed before I get married, or before the baby comes, or before I start this job. Guys, I'm telling you, that's counterproductive. 
It's gonna be like counting down days, you know, on a calendar, except it ain't Christmas waiting for us, right? <laughs> it's going back to work or the birth of our child or getting married or a trip or an interview. You have to just believe and trust the process and get excited about the process along the way and just have faith that you're going to be in a better place by then. Not necessarily recovered, maybe, and that's okay, but we'll be better then than where we are now, right? Just trust in the process. Do the things that you know that are going to help you, right? By changing your response, having your routine, doing your exposure. As long as you do that every single day and you're consistent, things will be better whenever that time comes. Okay, stop putting a timetable. It's too much pressure. This thing needs to be natural. Your subconscious isn't going to take it seriously if you're like trying to crunch everything in your day and everything's about beating anxiety. And oh my God, you know, at the end of this month, we got to go back to work. It's just not going to work that way, in my opinion. Number four, stop laying in your own filth in the morning. And by laying in your filth, laying in your negative thinking and your thoughts and your symptoms, right? Every single morning. Some of you are lucky enough to wake up and maybe not have symptoms the first few minutes. Some of you, unfortunately, like myself, a lot of times, especially my first year or so, the moment I woke up, like panic was already happening, I already had symptoms. But as time went on, like I started to get a few minutes, maybe, you know, like 15, 20 minutes, but I was making this big mistake. I would just lay in the bed and however I felt that morning was gonna dictate how the rest of the day would go, um, either immediately or you will do this, you'll sabotage yourself and you'll start looking for symptoms. Where's that head pressure that I felt yesterday? Oh, there it is, you know. Where's the chest? Oh, there it is, right? You look for it, the signals are sent, the tension happens wherever you're fearing the symptom to occur and then voila, there you go. Some of you are just getting on Google and you're just scrolling. Some of you are immediately like having to go to YouTube videos about anxiety. Some of you know, you're doing research on symptoms, maybe on Google. Um, some of you are jumping right on social media. Guys, this is one of the worst ways to start your day. Your subconscious is scared, it's frightened, it needs guidance. It doesn't need to lay around in bed for 30 minutes or an hour looking for symptoms, sitting in symptoms, you know, obsessing about them, you know, going through all these negative thoughts. It needs guidance. You need to get up and you need to have a routine in place. You need to get up, you need to hydrate, you need to do mindfulness, you need to get a little exercise in. You know, desensitize it with a cold shower, visualize how the day is gonna go, set some goals, get a journal, start journaling some of these things. You need some structure in the morning. Does that fully heal your anxiety? No, you know what I mean? You have to work on your root causes and you have to work on um, your exposure, face your fears, you know, and you can plan that throughout the day. But you just getting up in the morning, laying around, and then like, oh, I gotta hurry up and shower and go off to work, and then you wonder why your day is going like crap and that your symptoms aren't getting any better, that's why. That's why, get up within a few seconds to wake it up, stay off the phone, this is your time. This is not social media's time, it's not Google's time, right? It's not even my, like, right, like don't even just spend the, the first few minutes of your day watching my videos. Get up and do something for you, this is for you, okay? If you want more help with a routine, you can look up Trey Jones' perfect morning routine for anxiety. I got a good video that I did, it's been a few years. And also I have a very extensive daily routine in my course, Elite Anxiety Bootcamp. Um, that'll be down in the description in the first pin comment. But get up and have some direction with your day. And number five, guys, stop living a toxic life. All right, stop living a toxic life. That could be the things that you consume. It could be the people that you're around, just your life in general. You need a lifestyle detox, all right? So think about it. This is the perfect opportunity for you to cut back or quit on things like drugs, on nicotine tobacco, on excessive sugar, alcohol, the fast food, the bad foods, right? This is a perfect opportunity for you to start a new diet, to start exercising, to get away from those things, to find new healthy alternatives, to cope with your anxiety or to manage or to eventually hopefully build towards recovery. Guys, if your body is toxic from the things that you're putting in it, it's gonna be very, very difficult to recover from anxiety. It's gonna always be pulling you back. If you have health anxiety and you smoke or you do this, or you, you're gonna always think, well, you know, there could be something wrong because I do all of these things. You know what I mean? Um, your brain gut connection is very strong when it comes to things like the food that you're eating, guys. This is a perfect opportunity to start a new diet, right? I don't like the word diet, like a new change in your diet, right? A new way of eating that's gonna be healthy and that can add years to your life and help you 
uh, with your gut, your microbiome to help you have, you know, something else in your arsenal, right? Or your, your bag of tools that can help you with your mental health. Guys, the people that you hang around are huge. I know some of you are in situations, you know, if you're 14, I'm not asking you to run away from mom and dad. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm saying. But start with like the things that you can't help, like your some of your friends or the crowds that you hang around, right? The people that you're around. And again, I get it. Like some of you are at work. Maybe try not to talk to that person at work as much. Maybe hang out with this person over here that seems to be a little bit more positive, right? Or at least neutral. Try to get away from the negativity as much as you can. It's going to bring you down. The media that you watch, the things that you look up. You know, I can go on and on and on. You know what things you need to cut out of your life. Start doing that and start living a more healthy lifestyle. It'll help you with your recovery process. For more help with your recovery process, check out my course, Elite Anxiety Bootcamp. It's gonna be in the description and in the first pinned comment. I'm gonna read you a review real quick. Trey's videos, boot camp, and his calls have legit been better than the 10 different psychologists and psychiatrists I have been to. Not saying that they aren't beneficial for some, but so blessed Trey puts these videos and his time out to us for a super reasonable price. Thank you, sir. So check that out. If you haven't been able to be a part of that, it's helping so many people. I want you to be a part of that as well. My coaching information and a link for online therapy is going to be down below as well. Please like this video, guys, if you got value. And until next time, keep fighting.